Hi, I'm Scott from JustGetOutMore.com and welcome to my guest bedroom where I'm getting ready to pack for a uh, camping road trip uh, through the Pacific Northwest we're leaving, leaving tomorrow. This is a little bit different of a trip than a camping road trip where we load all the gear in the car, kind of have you know all, all the camping bins ready, kind of toss them all in there, big cooler, all that fun stuff. We're gonna fly all of our gear up to Seattle, rent a car, and then do a multi-state national park road trip from there. So it's a little bit different. You do have to um, think a little bit more about what gear you bring, and you'll have to make a few decisions along the way as to what is uh, important to have with you and what isn't. That being said, if you can get comfortable with this type of fly in camp approach, um, what I sometimes call travel camping, then you can open up this whole new world of, of travel, of cheap travel, because we all know that camping is basically the, the best way to save money on travel. Not only do you not have to pay, you know, 100 up to 200 bucks or whatever for a hotel every night, uh, but you can also bring your, your cooking stuff and you don't have to pay for expensive meals out, which means that every day you can save $100, $200 or so. And that really can help you extend uh, both the length of the trips you're taking or how many trips you actually get out on. So we are, like I said, flying up there. We're going to have one gear bag, this big... Uh, Eagle Creek duffel bag is, is what we're going to use. There's a couple pillows in here just to show you the general size, but it's otherwise empty. We are also going to have um, each a carry-on, you know, rolling luggage style um, bag uh, where we'll keep most of our clothes. We do have a couple items that we're not bringing, uh, that, or that we're bringing that are not shown here that are already packed away in that just because it has a flat surface. I'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, and then we also bring a small carry-on backpack that doubles as our, our day pack and counts as the personal bag for the airline. So we will have to check this one bag. We'll have to pay, you know, 25 bucks each way. But by doing so, we can fit all of this and actually a little bit more um, into that bag, fly it up there and save just hundreds and hundreds of dollars on the trip that we're taking. We're going to be gone uh, 11 days, 12 days, and, uh, we're, you know, we wouldn't be able to do that if we weren't going to be camping. Now, we already have our campsites reserved. They're all designated campgrounds uh, with a fire pit and a picnic table uh, and, uh, and some sort of bathroom, whether it's a pit toilet or uh, a, a flushing toilet. Um, I don't think any of our campgrounds have showers, however, so we'll talk about how to deal with that in a minute. But generally, um, you just need to bring your normal sort of camping stuff. Um, now, you need camping stuff that can fit in that bag, so it's kind of a mix between backpacking gear and regular car camping gear. Um, we are bringing, for instance, our normal car camping tent, this Marmot Limelight 3P, so three-person tent, extremely roomy, this model in particular. Uh, we, love, uh, we love this tent, so uh, we're definitely bringing that. Could be bringing a much smaller um, backpacking tent. I have a... Uh, MSR Hubba Hubba that uh, I would uh, otherwise bring, but we prefer to use that. And of course, our sleeping pads. Jen has an REI uh, Kingdom pad. Um, I use a Big Agnes Air Core. So we'll be bringing those. It's kind of our standard standard fare for car camping, along with um, these sleeping bags. These are in compression sacks, including this incredibly ugly one I got back in high school that I think is just kind of funny to hold on to. And then uh, this is my sleeping bag, this is Jen's, so we'll be bringing those. Having the compression stuff stacks really helps cut down on the space. Now, one of the items that's, you know, basically all you need for your sleep system. Um, also in those bags are a couple of uh, pillows, down pillows that have been folded up and stuffed in there. One thing that we're clearly missing in terms of gear here for a camping trip, however, is a cooler. And that's because we're actually going to be buying the cooler once we get up there. Uh, and there are a few other items we'll have to buy once we get up there too. Now, 
a lot of people, when they first hear about this approach, uh, this fly-in camp approach, they think, wow, well, what a, <laughs> what a waste of money to go up there and buy a cooler that you're only going to use for one trip, you know, a 10-day trip. And that's true. We are only going to be using it for those 10 days. We'll buy a relatively cheap one, 15, 20 bucks at Walmart or whatever. And uh, at the very end of the trip, along with any other gear we're not going to bring back, we will drop off at a Goodwill store on the way to the airport. Now, when you really start thinking about it, though, buying some of this stuff up there actually makes a lot of financial sense. By buying that cooler, and we'll also buy a dollar plastic bin to go in it to put all our food in, uh, and of course we'll, we'll have to buy food up there so that, um, uh, so that we put it in that bin so that the ice doesn't inundate the food, then uh, we can save just a ton of money on eating out. You know, most times when you go out, it's, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks, sometimes more depending on where you go. Depends on how many adult beverages you might add to the bill. Uh, by doing it this way, you know, we're gonna be spending five or eight bucks on each meal, you know, that we just buy at the grocery store, keep in the cooler. It will be a, it will be a, a lower end cooler, so we'll have to buy ice more frequently. But so that means every day or two, we have to buy, you know, two to five dollars worth of ice. Again, the math still definitely works out in our favor. Now, I could bring our my small backpacking stove, um, the little pocket rocket most people are probably familiar with. Instead, I usually bring this this one burner stove. You know, it's not as useful as a traditional Coleman two burner stove. Um, but the reason I bring this instead of the backpacking stove is that this uses that one pound green Coleman propane tank uh, canister, I should say. And those are ubiquitous. You can find those anywhere. They're about five bucks, sometimes six bucks. Um, but you can find those at a gas station, Walmart, grocery store, basically wherever. Um, and we'll use this to cook on. Now, we'll use our normal pan set that we use for car camping. Uh, this one is an MSR. They don't make it anymore. This has got to be 20 years old, but it's still perfectly good, so I keep using it. This is a nesting set. There's actually three pots. Um, and three lids slash frying pans. So we have a lot of options there. And then uh, in this little bag, I stuff some items in, inside. This little bag has a uh, sponge, a little scraper, some camp soap, um, have some, um, some uh, uh, spices that I bring, seasoning and spices. Uh, obviously the handle, I got a little pack towel in there too. Um, so I usually bring this entire kit when I fly in camp and that way I can uh, cook whatever I need to. Now, there's a few different ways to deal with uh, dishes. Um, one way is to buy uh, some disposable stuff up there. Um, I'm actually gonna bring items I already own. These are four um, plastic, uh, almost nail jean, nail sort of plastic uh, bowls and uh, plates. And, uh, I have another little towel in here. Um, these couldn't have been more than a dollar each, maybe 50 cents. They're, they're really cheap. So if something happens to them on this trip, it's not a big deal if I don't come back with them. I can easily buy some more. And that kind of goes with everything I'm bringing here. Um, I have a small uh, spatula. This is probably 20 years old too. This is a Coleman uh, camping spatula, which just means it has a slightly shorter handle. You could buy, you know, a dollar one at the dollar store instead. Uh, in this bag, I have kind of your standard set of silverware, with the cutlery, utensils, whatever you want to call them. Uh, these are kind of the plastic nail jean style. Um, you know, we kind of have two of everything with an extra spoon. Have a couple big spoons too for soup or for stirring. And then I have a, a really cheap uh, kitchen knife. Uh, this, I'm pretty sure I bought at Walmart for a dollar uh, several years ago. It's been perfectly fine. I uh, use that to chop vegetables or anything else like that. I have a very thin plastic kind of floppy cutting board um, that's been packed in with the other luggage just because it's easier to keep it flat. Uh, so we bring that. That's also a great surface to work on uh, when you're cooking stuff. Put it on the kind of the, the dirty uh, picnic table. And then of course we have a, uh, a corkscrew and, and bottle opener uh, for the adult beverages uh, that we'll be having near the campfire. Along with that, we have 
toss it back. Uh, just kind of a standard utility knife. Um, this is a Mora knife. These are super cheap, 15 bucks on Amazon. Um, they're not a full tang, but they're a three quarter tang. They're perfect for my use. I don't need anything special. Um, I use this for anything from uh, cutting meat or preparing something uh, to, you know, to eat, to um, doing some light woodworking, uh, making some uh, tinder, uh, cutting cord, whatever you need a general knife for, um, here it is. Now I'm bringing that day pack and I usually uh, in that day pack have my normal hiking gear, including a knife. I've taken that out and, and including a lighter too for fire starter. Um, I've taken all that out because you can't really fly with it and I want to be able to carry on everything but that big duffel bag. So when you get there, um, you, you may have to buy a few ad additional items like that, a lighter, um, water, usually I bring water containers from here, um, a few items like that, the cooler of course, propane tank. Uh, a couple other items that we are flying up there are these uh, tiny little lanterns. Uh, they're made by Black Diamond. Um, I believe their name is uh, Moji, but I'll link to it. Um, they're pretty bright for how small they are. They have, uh, we use rechargeable batteries with them um, along with all of our gear so that we can easily recharge everything when we get home. So we can use both of these uh, on the picnic table when we're cooking or hanging out. Um, these also hang in the tent uh, if we're going to spend some significant time in the tent. Um, speaking of the tent, we will uh, also bring a tarp and we have uh, extra stakes, a bunch of extra paracord and uh, several of these um, bungee cords. Um, we usually don't bring the bungee cords, we just bought them. We want to try a few specific things out, so we're going to bring them to try out. Since we're going to be up um, camping for so long, we're going to need a shower. And like I said, I don't think those campgrounds have showers. So we're going to bring this camp shower. It's a pretty standard one. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know how many gallons, four or six or something. Uh, black bag, you put water in it, you put it out in the sun for a long time. It heats up warm enough that it's sufficient. comes with a hose and a little uh, spray nozzle at the end. Um, so we'll use that. Potentially use the tarp to create some sort of uh, shower curtain. Um, and if that doesn't work given the campsite that we're at or however the campground's laid out, then we'll simply wear a bathing suit uh, and shower in our bathing suit out in the open. Uh, and we don't have to worry about, um, you know, anybody pressing charges. A couple other items I'll quickly go through. Um, you probably have most of all this if you already have a, a camping setup. Uh, one item, two, well, one item that you might not have, or we have two of them. Our backpacking chairs these are incredibly useful I love these this is my backpacking chair I bring this on uh, backpacking trips it's kind of the one luxury item I bring um, and uh, it's great when you get done with a long trail and you can actually sit down on a, in a comfy chair near the campfire instead of sitting on the ground or that really awkward rock or a log or whatnot uh, and then we have another one for Jen um, she gets the newer version the the macro chair uh, which uh, fl Flex Light by REI. Macro's uh, quite a bit bigger, it's a lot more comfy, um, quite a bit heavier. You probably wouldn't bring this backpacking even if you brought this, um, or even if you often bring this. So we'll have those, uh, not only for sitting at the campfire, but also for lunch, um, pull, it, you know, pull off in the middle of the day, scenic vista or something, we wanna eat there, we can toss out the chairs real, real, really quickly. And, uh, and eat there and kind of be comfortable instead of just standing around or finding a rock or sitting um, in the car. One other item that uh, we're bringing um, are Tervis style glasses or cups, I should say. Now the ones we're bringing are actually the larger ones and we're bringing one for each of us. They're already packed away in the other luggage so I can't show you, uh, but it's the same sort of uh, style. These are great um, for a lot of things, basically for any any drink you want on your trip. Um, we'll primarily be using them for um, a hot drink at night around the campfire. We make kind of a spicy apple cider where we add uh, cinnamon whiskey to hot apple cider, uh, make a little bit of an adult beverage. Uh, it's hard to drink out of those with a uh, solo cup because the, the water's so hot. So we'll use these for that. And then uh, in the morning when we're driving past the gas station, we might get uh, some coffee. 
coffee refill in here. It's half the price if you bring your own cup. Uh, same with the fountain drinks. Uh, and the larger ones that we have fit in the cup holders, which is, which is key. Uh, we have a few other uh, hiking items that we'll be bringing in our day pack. We'll be wearing uh, hiking boots uh, and some of the bigger clothing um, that doesn't fit particularly well in, the, uh, uh, in my backpack. And we have a, a few other items like that. But other than that, um, we basically are just going to be bringing these uh, towels. We'll use these when we shower. Um, and these smaller towels, this, uh, you know, we use for, for just about anything. This small hand towel I use all the time uh, when we're traveling. I'll bring it into a rest area or if we stop at a fast food restaurant to use the bathroom. They often don't have... Uh, paper towels handy, and I like rinsing my face and kind of getting cleaned up a little bit. Uh, so I'll bring that in so that I don't have to figure out how to dry my face with that, that one hand dryer that's, uh, that's awkward. Um, let's see, just a couple other items I quickly want to go over. Um, Ziploc baggies are your friend. Um, we bring a ton of these. Uh, in fact, we probably have another, another batch in my pack. Uh, all different sizes. You can use these to, uh, for just about anything. Um, we, uh, because we're going to be buying food, um, we want to have a bunch of extra ones of these so that we can kind of repackage it once we open it. So say if you get a thing of uh, Ritz crackers, sometimes we like pepperoni, uh, cheddar cheese, and, and Ritz crackers or some sort of cracker. Um, you know, it doesn't have a receivable bag, so we'll put them all in here and ditch the box and save some space in the car. Um, we are also bringing these really thin um, fleece blankets. These are super cheap. We bought them at Ikea. Um, two bucks each. It might have been $1.50. I can't recall. Uh, we use these for a lot of things. I'll put it over the cooler when we're driving um, to help block the sun from hitting the cooler, heating up the cooler, melting the ice quicker. It also helps uh, dampen reflections in the back mirror, which is, or back window, which is useful. Um, also, we'll put them in our sleeping, we'll bring them in the tent. I often like to sleep with kind of the sleeping bag half open, and I'll just kind of toss this over me. Um, I can pull it up over my face if it's uh, bright in the morning, I'm not quite ready to get up. We also uh, use these in our camp chairs next to the campfire for when your back kind of starts to get a little bit cold, um, or if the firewood we, <laughs> we're burning is uh, popping a lot and tossing a lot of um, a lot of embers, then we'll, we'll sometimes even put this over as kind of a big bib, just in case something um, hits us, it doesn't burn our shirt or, or clothing that costs a lot more than this, you know, $1.50 or $2 blanket. And uh, if we need to, if we need extra space, at the end of the trip, say we bought, bought a bunch of souvenirs, um, we can just donate them along with the cooler and other items, and you know, we're really not out that much money. One other item that I didn't mention here that we are also bringing is this uh, rectangular uh, folding sink by UST. And uh, it's kind of silicone on the side and has kind of a hard plastic top and bottom. And then it kind of expands out. And what I love using that for is when we're camping, I can drag some water over and be able to put out the fire, campfire at night. Sometimes I go do that, stir it, go get another thing of water, do it again, make sure the campfire is out, fully out. Um, we'll also bring uh, water over to the um, over to our tent so we, so we can kind of clean up at night, you kind of wash our face. When we're kind of done that, we can uh, wash our feet. I almost exclusively use uh, wear chacos uh, if I can. And so my feet get pretty dirty and dusty, particularly when we're, when we're camping. So I love to you know, kind of clean off the feet a little bit before we go to bed. Uh, so we also use that. And uh, other than that, that's, that's basically all we need to bring besides our normal clothes and toiletries and, and uh, any other hiking gear that we need. So as you can see, it, all this is easily going to fit in this bag. I'll have plenty of extra space if I need, if I want it. Um, may even toss some additional kind of luxury items in depending on the space that we have. And, uh, but it's pretty simple. Um, you have just as good of a time camping with this stuff as you know all the stuff you bring and have to manage once you uh, camp when you're car camping, uh, you know from home where you can bring all the stuff you own. 
But if you get used to doing this, if you get comfortable doing this, if you're willing to maybe sacrifice a couple of those, um, those really luxury items to do this, you can save so much money. You can have so many more trips or longer trips. You can make so many, you know, really treasured memories um, because you could spend more time going to more places and um, less time sitting at home. So again, um, I call this uh, travel camping. Um, I'll definitely post more about this on my blog at justgetoutmore.com. If you have any questions or you have any suggestions or other pieces of gear that you love bringing when you do this, or you have any other questions about this approach, be sure to uh, comment either on this video or in the blog post, uh, the main blog post I'll link to. And uh, other than that, I hope that you uh, can get out and, uh, and give this a shot if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the trail. Thanks again.